Welcome to the session on Fast Fourier Transform Algorithms in the course of Digital Signal Processing. In this session, you will learn about two important Fast Fourier Transform Algorithms that is Radix2 DIT FFT Algorithm and Radix2 DIF FFT Algorithm. You will also learn Butterfly Diagram Representation of FFT algorithm and calculations of computational complexity for direct DFT method and FFT algorithms. And thereafter, you will learn important issues with respect to FFT algorithms such as memory requirement, beat reversal and in-place computation. If you look at the Fourier timeline, in 1807, Fourier has first published Fourier series for theory of it. Thereafter, his work was supported by Dirichlet conditions and in a year of 1965, Coulet and Touquet expanded and generalized the ideas as proposed by Fourier and introduced the concept of fast Fourier transform. FFT has countless number of applications in engineering, finance, engineering mathematics, signal processing and so on. We can truly say that FFT is what made signal processing possible for lots of real life applications today. Now as we are moving from discrete Fourier transform to fast Fourier transform, what DFT does, DFT performs the Fourier transform on discrete time signals. This DFT computation is inefficient typically when the sequence length available is a very large number. So the idea in FFT is FFT decomposes the computation of DFT of a sequence of length capital N into successively smaller number of DFTs. So, if we look at the formula of DFT, which is x of k is equal to summation, small n is equal to 0 to n minus 1, x of n into e to the power minus j, 2 pi small n into k upon n. And these computations are carried out for the range of small k, which is the frequency index from 0 to n minus 1. Now, this formula can be equivalently expressed by replacing the exponent term with a twiddle factor representation or it can also be computed using the matrix method. Similarly, in case of inverse discrete Fourier transform, the according to the formula, the type of computations during IDFT involved are similar to the DFT form itself. So now let us look at the direct DFT computation method and what is meant by its computational complexity. For the sake of understanding, let us consider capital N equal to 4. That means we are computing 4 point DFT. Now, considering the same standard DFT formula for the range of small k from 0 to 3. In order to calculate one frequency sample of DFT, in all, it requires to calculate four complex multiplications as the input x of n when is getting multiplied to the complex exponential basis function, then this multiplication is to be carried out for four times because the sequence length will also be equal to 4. Whereas, after getting the product terms, those product terms will get added and they will become the complex additions. So, overall there will be 4 product terms and those 4 product terms will get added up by means of 3 complex additions. Now, this is for one DFT sample wherein we have 
four DFT samples ranging from capital X of zero up to capital X of three. Thus, the total number of complex multiplications required are four times four multiplications, and here with four times three complex additions. That means sixteen complex multiplications and twelve complex additions will be required. Now, for a general case, that is when we are computing a capital N point DFT, we can generalize this computations as n square complex multiplications and n times n minus one complex additions as the computational complexity for direct DFT. So, during this calculation. Uh, we have seen that number of complex multiplications in direct DFT case turns up as n square, and complex additions for uh, n equal to four it turns up as twelve, and in general case that is n times n minus one. Now, how about the FFT computations in comparison to the direct DFT formula? So. Later on, we are going to see what FFT gives away. In case of FFT, uh, it results into n by two log to the base two of capital N as the total complex multiplications for n point DFT computation by FFT algorithm. Similarly, number of complex additions for n point FFT computation. Will come up as n into log to the base two of capital N, which we are going to prove later. So, I'll take an example. If you perform two million point FFT on a desktop computer, it takes approximately ten seconds. On the other hand, for a two million point direct DFT method, it will take more than Three weeks period. So it is evident from this example that FFT performs computations faster than direct DFT method and is suitable for use while dealing with real time signal processing applications where sequence length capital N is very large. so this table shows for different values of capital n using the direct dft method how many number of complex multiplications and complex additions will be required so we have seen the case of n equal to 4 in a same way for n equal to 16 number of complex multiplications will be n square that is 16 square Wherein the number of complex additions will be n times n minus one, that is sixteen times sixteen minus one, and that is equal to two forty. So likewise, as you see, when the value of capital N increases, the amount of computation for multiplication and addition also increases proportionally. Coming up for the fast Fourier transform case, the name itself implies it is mean to perform faster DFT computation, and to do this, it takes advantage of the two important properties of twiddle factor, which is a complex basis function and exponential term, and the two properties what FFT strategically make use are. Symmetry property and periodicity property. So, uh, while taking up the DIT and DIF FFT algorithm proofs, we are going to refer to these two properties. One of it is W to the power k plus n by two to the base capital N is equivalent to minus of W raised to k to the base n. Similarly, W raised to two to the base n. Is equivalent to W to the base n by two. It implies that, in place of computing a single 
capital N length DFT which consumes larger computation which requires larger computation instead if we divide it into two smaller n by 2 lengths then the DFTs the DFT computation will need lesser computation in place of the total capital n point DFT computation. So these algorithms FFT algorithms they exploit computational savings and that is why they are termed as fast Fourier transform algorithms. So, here with we are going to consider the Radix 2 FFT 